Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Monday. Today is uh, February, what? The 25th. My goodness, the month is oh, almost mercy, over. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy Monday to everyone. Uh, I'm Clarissa Myers, better known as Reese by many of my friends. And I'm Roland Myers, her husband. Glad to be with you all on this sunny Monday here in uh, Richmond. And we are coming to you live from Richmond, Virginia. You just said uh -huh. that. <laughs> so anyway, um, every day, Roland and I come and share just something to pick you up, something that can help you in your personal life, in your, uh, in your business life, and in any way that, you know, it's, it's, we try to bring value. And we got a winner for you today. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, we're speaking to spiritual entrepreneurs, people who are, they are determined not to settle. That word is not even in their vocabulary. They want to be more, they want to do more, they want to impact more lives, they want to make a difference for someone or several people or for many people as we journey through life. We want to be able to be more impactful. And so Roland and I have been on this journey studying greatness because you know what? We all have greatness within us, but it's up to us to bring it out, to find it, cultivate what's special because we each have a purpose, you know. We were created with a special purpose and it's up to us to discover, to find what it is, bring it out and uh, let it permeate, you know, the, our surroundings. So, oh, several people have joined us today, and I see Charles. Hello, glad that you can join us. And Dave. Dave, Dave, glad that you go. We can wave. And uh, I think, oh, hi, Johnny. Johnny's here. Tell us where you're tuning in from. And I think, uh, yes, I can. We can wave. So, we're going to talk today about connection or connecting, connecting. We were listening to uh, John Maxwell. Many of you may have heard of him or listened to him. He is an inspirational, motivational speaker uh, who started off his, his work in, in the ministry. And uh, he was talking about connecting. And uh, he says that many people communicate. They communicate, they talk all day long, but very few have right. mastered or learned how to, to connect. Connect. What do you want to tell us? Well, well I can't wait to um, look for his book, How to Communicate with People, because that's where we get a lot of this information from. So maybe the library has it. Um, everybody talks, but very few people actually connect, mm -hmm. is you know what he's here to tell us. And um, he gave us an example of this book that he wrote. And so he, he solicited people to, you know, send in, write in ideas and everything uh, that he may have left out. And he got hundreds and thousands of responses. And um, he said something very, very interesting. He said, none of us is as smart as all of us That's right. together. Because these people said a lot of things that he didn't even think of or that he left out of his book. So he had all this rich information. And he also said some of the best um, thinking was done by other others, people. other mm -hmm. people. Yes, in fact, um, he said, the greatest communicator, many of you probably already know this, but the greatest communicator was that of Christ, Christ. Jesus Christ, yes. He, he was the example. Uh, he also said, he described what connecting really is. He says connecting is the ability to identify with, you know, to ident to relate to and identify with people in such a way that it increases your influence with them. Mm -hmm. Increasing your influence with them. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, the great commission is to go out into all the world, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Uh, and that's what we ought to be doing, communicating, connecting with people in such a way that it not only, it, it lifts them to another level. Mm -hmm. It 
takes them from where they are and lifts them. Yeah. And um, to the point where they look at us, or we look at them as far as getting advice and things like that. So, you know, that's something I've always heard of, but I never had anybody to really explain how to do that. And, you know, he kind of breaks it down in his book here. And so he made three distinct points. The first one is connecting is all about others. <laughs> we individuals are not in the picture. Connecting with somebody is all about someone else. Oh, thank you for the love. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you. Yeah. Um, did you want to add to that? Well, he gave the... Uh, the analogy of being a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, and they say it's lonely at the top of the mountain. Well, he said if you're at the top and you're lonely, it's... then, you know, no one's following you. So... Right. And he said, too, that you're just a mountain climber, a yeah. mountain climber, because you're up there by yourself. Or he a said hiker. a leader, yeah, a leader takes others with them, with, with him or her, to the top. So... You know, if, if it's lonely at the top, you went on up there by yourself. Yeah. You know, and um, the most joy uh, above everything is that of being of service. Right. Yeah, servanthood, he calls it. A leader um, never crosses the finish line alone. Right. Matter of fact, he's probably the last one because he's busy helping others to cross the finish line. And a leader, once you become a leader, you have... Uh, given up your right to think of self. How did mm -hmm. he put it? He, he, he put it in such a way. He says, the first principle of leadership is that you give up the right to think about self first. I mean, yes, you can think about yourself, but you can't think about yourself first. It has to be others. Mm -hmm. Um Yes, and leadership is all about servanthood. That's what he said. So that was the first main point that he brought out. And um, did you want to do the second one? Did you get the second one? Well, I was going to say that he also says, well, if you want to help others, then uh, help them get what they want, and then you in turn will get what you want. That's right. Yeah, that's 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 powerful. the way that that's uh, that's the way it works. You know, it's with attraction. You have to. You have to help others achieve their goals mm -hmm. before you think about yourself. Yeah. All right? Let's see. I think some others have come. Oops, I've got my fingers all in the way. Uh, good afternoon, Dave. Glad that you can join us today. He says he's here from D.C., but currently lives in Florida. <clears throat> Is it cold enough up here for you? We're in the Virginia area. And then Cherie. Thank you, Cherie, for coming on with us this afternoon. And hi, Karen. And uh, wow, this is great. Thank you. Thank you. I wish we could take all the credit, but this is what uh, John Maxwell has been sharing. And we, like I said, we, we, we are looking for greatness in all of its forms. Yes, it says leadership is servanthood. Servanthood, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, the second point he says that connecting with others requires energy. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy. So, and he gave, he gave the example of, you know, when he first started off um, his, in his ministry, he and his wife went to work in a little town. What was the name of the town? I forgot to write it down. Hill it's something. Never heard of it. Uh, some, somewhere way out in the farm, you know, it's, there were not very many people. Mm. They only had three people when he started. <laughs> As he, his wife, and a little lady who lived, she was like 90-something years old, who lived next door to the church. And it was just the three of them. But, you know, in, in the, the time that he was there, he was working to serve others. And the church started to grow. And um, he had been away now from that little church for more than 25 years. And uh, while he was there, it grew to the point that they had to leave that little church and build another structure, which was much bigger, and it, it, it the men, so many people came. But and his when, career took off. And when he says grow, he means three people. He and his wife and his old lady. Yeah, three people. Yeah, 
he said that uh, the, <clears throat> the um, he moved away and he'd, he'd been traveling all around and his career really took off and he was speaking in different engagements here and there and everywhere. And so the little church was about to celebrate their like the, the 30th anniversary or whatever. And so they sent him a letter and invited him to come back to the church. And um, it had been so long, he didn't even know if many of the people were still alive. Because, <laughs> it you know, had been such a long time. So he asked the, um, um, after he said he would come, the, I guess the elder, one of the members, called him back in five minutes and said, oh, I didn't even ask how much you want, you know, to payment. He said, well, no, no charge. He's going to come. In fact, he's going to bring his family because, you know, they heard about this little place. But the long story or the short story of it all is he wanted to know who were the members still at the church, not just the new ones, but the ones who were there when he was there. And he asked the, 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 the leader, whoever the church pastor was, could you, could you, um, let me know. So give me a picture, uh, like a directory picture of the membership. And do you know that when he went down to, to visit and speak with them, all the ones who had been there, he wanted to meet with them prior to the big, uh, the big, you know, the big meeting. And for each one, he had a box with things in it, things that were given to him, gifts from way back then. He said, this, yeah. this was the first sermon that I preached and you he gave yeah, to us. yeah he gave something that was meaningful to each one so you know it takes energy thought care to be able to do that so mm -hmm. um connection requires energy so those little memorabilia things that he had had and that he saved from way back that meant a lot to the members he there? gave another example, too, uh, marriage and dating. Um, you know, when you're dating, you uh, you spend a lot of energy. You know, mm. you think about what the other person wants and you try to get it. Mm. And, uh, well, then when you get married, it, it's, it kind of <laughs> it drops fizzles? off. Yeah. Well, I hope it hasn't mm. fizzled for us. <laughs> no. I don't think no. it has. I don't think so yeah. as well. So, um, so. Connecting requires energy. Connecting uh, is all about others. You have to go out of your way. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. um, it's got to come out your comfort ab zone. Above and beyond. Um, yeah. And then his third point was connectors find common ground. Mm -hmm. Finding common ground. And, you know, something he said that I had never really thought of before. Mm -hmm. He says that... Um, when you connect with somebody, you, you, you have some mutual, um, something that's, that connects you, is, is common ground. So like in, in, in the area of church, in religion, the connection for anyone who, who's religious is, you know, relationships. You know, relationships, we call each other, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, you know, because we are children of God, and so God is our Father. So we're connected, and that's common ground. So it doesn't matter True. what religion you're right. in, we still serve, we all believe in the Almighty, the powerful, yeah. and so it connects us. Whereas in the business world, the connection, guess what it is? Respect. That's the connection. And that was an eye-opener to me. I, I never thought of it that way. You mm -hmm. know? And now everything begins to make sense. Of the things I know that I was going through, um, it is respect is the most thing, most important thing, and you must get that in order to be influential and be respected. Yeah. So, um, and we talked about being respected or how to earn respect. Uh, I think it was last week. Sometime we did yeah. two sessions on that. You also said too, you need to go where the people are. And then another thing you need to do, you need to know what the people know. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want to uh, part of that common ground. And then you need to participate with the people and what they are doing. Excuse me. So um, those are, you know, a lot, 
sometimes we look at it it's like fishing, you know. <laughs> you got to go where the fish are, you're not going to catch any fish. And that's the key thing. And uh, maybe a lot of times we fail because we're not where the people are or the type of people that we're trying to reach. You know, we're, we're fishing somewhere else. So um, that, that's, those are three very important things that ought to be taught at a leadership leadership conference, conference or yeah like that. yeah because I think a lot of people are missing that mm -hmm. so so those are the three things that we have for you today um, you know being able to connect uh, with others finding common ground so those were three points that he he brought out connecting is all about others Two, uh, connecting requires energy energy in thought energy in being able to go the extra mile energy putting others first before you think of yourself and of course the third one finding common ground finding common ground um, did you want to say something else yeah he said something very powerful as a pastor and I'm sure many pastors are trying to do this too he's a pastor but he's also a businessman and he says uh, you know to take biblical principles and you know, take biblical principles that teach um, certain principles and not put a verse to it, mm -hmm. present it to the people in such a way that, you know, God can actually work through that. I know. remember too, he, he told a story all oh, the time because we try to only do 15 minutes. Well, we explain. Well, you want to do that one? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, he said, when you said that, it made me think, the, one of his friends, not a religious man at all, he was a CEO of a huge corporation. He didn't say the name of the corporation or the company, but it's huge. And um, he met up with this guy, and they, they play golf, and they do things. They meet every other month or something like that. But he didn't believe in God. He was an atheist. And, but he didn't bring that up. He didn't go there to like tell him anything about it. And um, they, they met and they talked, and at one point, he wanted to hear something about uh, what he believed. He but he said, no, no, you, you, you're, not, you're not ready to hear it. He said, yeah, I'm ready to hear it. And he kept pestering him every time, hey, I'm ready to hear it today. And John Maxwell said, no, nope, no, you're not ready. And so the guy it, it kind of like was building his interest. And uh, he kept, you know, putting him, you know, like, telling him, no, you're still not ready. But then one day, the CEO's wife became terminally ill with cancer. And um, he came to him, this is the CEO. He, he said, I want to know, my wife and I want to know. And at that point, that's when John said, hmm, maybe you're beginning to. So he's, he met up with them both and he shared his faith with them and um, they were ready to receive it. And uh, he didn't go into detail about how his wife was doing, but the they, both became, they both became Christians. They accepted the Lord. And uh, that was going into with the, I think, was that the common ground? Yeah. I don't I can't remember exactly. But, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying at the end, you know, he, this CEO stood before his board, his people. The whole company. The whole company. And told them the, the proudest day he ever had. When well, he told John the proudest day he ever had was when he told his company that he was a Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, he was so, proud of that. Yes. So, so um, just looked up at the time. Anyway, we thank you for joining us today. We um, come and share something that can be uh, uplifting to you in your business life, in your daily life, in your spiritual life, and um, every day yeah. we'll be back tomorrow at 5:30 to share another nugget. And somewhere in the description, you know, there is a uh, link to being able to create an ebook. You know, we heard John talk about the book that he wrote, and he solicited ideas from everyone. Well, here is a way that you can write your own story using information from the ebook. So we thank you for joining us, and we will be back tomorrow. Yeah. So have a great evening. and Keep communicating. 
I'm connecting. I'm connecting. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye now. Bye-bye.